Mr. Fitzgerald? What? I need to speak with you urgently. What's the problem? Can I get you another drink? <gasps> no, thank you. I shouldn't be drinking at all. I want tablets for my nerves. More than a pint and I'll pass out. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? McGuire says you did. You don't believe that damned hooligan, do you? Why not? His probation officer could tell you a tale or two. Have you heard about the gem which Pegram found? I've heard a rumor, but you can't believe everything you hear or see, can you? Where can I find <coughs> Professor Pegram? I heard he's gone fishing. I don't know where. What can you tell me about the castle? There is nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. What did this red nose suggest to you? Blood. Why is that? I used to bleed a lot when I was a kid. Every time there was a playground scrap, I'd end up with a bloody nose. I wouldn't have minded, but I wasn't even involved in the scraps. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Uh, no. Uh, at least I don't think so. Look closely. He has a scar on his face. No, I'm sure I don't know him. Check out this pass. Yeah. It's yours, is it? Not exactly. Do you recognize the name? Thomas Merlin. No, never heard of him. Shake my hand. It's a trick, isn't it? Damn it, you're right. I can't seem to fool anyone. See you later. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? <laughs> Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical remains, not coal. <laughs> Is that a fact? <laughs> what the hell for? Here's the science of archaeology part. Understanding how people used to live by what they <laughs> left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavored condoms, more likely. Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? First I heard of it. <gasps> Where have you been, Pat? <laughs> that gem is the talk of every town from Loch Mahn to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. The lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? No. I tried it myself, yeah. but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? No. Do you remember seeing yeah. Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication.
Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of round coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He does joined up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? Oh no, I'm here on vacation. What's that? The vacation part. It's what the Americans call a holiday. Oh right. In Loch Marne? You come to Loch Marne for a holiday? Sure, it's a very pretty place. Where the hell are you from, mister? California. I know it. That's where the prunes come from. <laughs> yeah, amongst other things. What does this false nose mean to you? Ah, uh, no, you're a clown. No, not me. Ha <laughs> ha, you're a good one, aren't you? Did you hear that, Michael? I hate clowns. <laughs> Listen to this fella. I hate clowns, says he. Isn't he just the funniest man you ever did see, Michael? He's not a clown, Doyle. He's not even remotely funny. Thanks. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? It's a handsome mug on that fella, to be sure. Is he a film star? Don't be fooled. This is the face of a psychopathic killer. No. Well, there's one in the eye for me and my men. Does this security pass mean anything to you? Uh, mm, well, no. May I shake your hand? No, you can't. Well, how come? Because I'll spill me beer if you do. Does this tissue mean anything to you? No, but you should show that to my granny. She could tell you fortune from it. From a soiled tissue? Sure. Some people read tea leaves. <coughs> my granny reads handkerchiefs. Bye for now. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. I'm O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? Do you know where I can find Pegram? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that, but he's gone from the village. I saw a point with our esteemed host, I might add. Why is Pegram's departure upset the landlord? He's lost a paying guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bid. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticated. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in braille. Do you know where no. Peter has gone? I'm <coughs> sorry, but I don't. He hoped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, no. he'll not be missed in Loch no. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to now. No. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now there's a gem. 
which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stuff. No. What's your interest no. in the Jew? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh, no. Thank the Lord for that. What can you tell me about the castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Or are the ruins open to the public? Oh, no, it's much too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. Pegram thought otherwise, didn't he? Ah, but it's not difficult to get them history boys excited, is it? Give them a bone to play with, and they're happy as puppies. No! Was it Pegram who dug up the tripod at the castle? The same man, if he wasn't his twin brother. No! And can you guess what he did with the tripod? He sent it to a museum in Paris. I've seen it. Have you heard of the Phantom? More than that, I've seen it. No. And let me tell you, it's a dreadful no. spectacle. So it's not just a local legend. There really is a Phantom of Loch Marne. Oh, no. I was talking about the Phantom of the Opera. No! no. Does this red nose suggest anything to you? No. It's a clown's nose, isn't it? No. I haven't been to a circus since I was ten years old. O'Donnelly and I walked all the way to Ballymore, 15 miles in our bare feet. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Nope, I've never no. seen him before. No. What can you tell me about this ID pass? Groove Electronics. I've never heard of it. No. No. I'd like to shake you by the hand, Mr. O'Brien. I'd rather not. You see, I happen to notice that vibrating buzzer in your palm. What do you make of this tissue? Well, I guess that muck on it is grease paint. There's no fooling you, Mr. O'Brien. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? The design is Middle Eastern, I'd say. No! Goodbye for now. of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? No. Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? No. Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? No, thank you. I don't plan to stay too long. Who does? Most folk take one look at Loch Martin and jump back on the bus. Do you know Sean Fitzgerald very well? I know him enough not to sell him more than two pints. He's like a kid when he gets a few beers inside him. I'm not surprised. He's on medication for his nerves. There's nothing wrong with his nerves. He's just screwy. No. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his by any chance? Oh, no. I'm just trying to track him down. Me, too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? That's right. In the best room in the house. That's the one with the bed. Can I see Pegram's room? It's been taken by one of the brothers from the reformatory. They come every year for spiritual <coughs> refreshment. <coughs> That's a good one. Their idea of refreshment is a good full of stout. I wouldn't want to disturb a man of God. Especially not a big fella from the bad boy's home. I don't blame you, Mick. That brother's got muscles like a muscle man. No. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first no. today. Seriously. I'm looking for a man dressed in a clown costume. Or would he be having a little white dog with a black patch over the eye? I shouldn't think so. What can you tell me about the castle? You're the second person to ask me that today. 
I don't know anything about the castle. It's only an old bone anyway. Who else was asking about the castle? He said he was a reporter. He was asking about the little people. I could have told him a tale or two about the little people. He might have paid me to hear what he wanted me to say. Anyway, I chucked him out on his arse. Good for you, Mick. That's the way to deal with journalists. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's grown from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over. Does this false nose mean anything to you? It's not Red Nose Day again, is it? Uh, I don't know. But this is part of a clown's costume. I know that. Good God almighty. What do you take me for? Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you all the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. Do you recognize the name on this card? No. Should I? Nah, it was a long shot. Hey, bartender? A landlord, if you don't mind. Sorry. Shake my hand, why don't you? Now, why should I do that? What have you got up your sleeve? Nothing. Come on, just shake my hand. Uh, not just now, mister. I have to be careful on account of the health restrictions. Oh, jeez. Does this tissue mean anything to you? That's disgusting. Uh-huh. I found it in the sewers. Well, what's the idea of waving it around in my face? You're worse than old Ron. Put it away, man. Thanks. <laughs>